We're going to talk about ties and we're going to show you why the Easy Twist tie is the way to go and you'll quit using this garbage forever. What I have here in my hand, these are all stick ties or straight ties. This one is called a pre-tied tie and you'll see that it has a little curly tail on it and that's supposed to help speed us up a little bit. 12 gauge steel, 11 gauge aluminum, and then 9 gauge pre-tie. What I will be using is I will be using the pre-tides on the post and then I will use the 12 gauge steel tie on all the top rail. Ugh, you don't want to be on this side. We will hook this on here, and this is 11 gauge wire. We'll bend it around, tie it like that. And then I get my pliers in here, and I crank it over. Now this is about as far as most people will go. They'll just put a hook on it here, and they'll put a hook on it here, and that's good. But then we need to talk about the way the spec calls for it. One of the reasons that I don't like this way, and that the spec is written how it is, is because it doesn't take a whole lot to kick that off. We've already unbent that. And if I put this tie on down here, put the tie on here, we can kick those ties off and that happens all the time. People will build a fence, a chain link fence, then they'll go put slats in it and the wind will just snap the ties right off. And then the fence will be laying over just like it is now. So that's how easy that comes off. So this is a steel tie, but if I want to, again, I can kick the tie right off. And believe it or not, that happens all the time. Now, Dan, would you like to please demonstrate for us exactly what it looks like when you use an easy twist? Oh, I'd love to. Thanks. These tools, there are imitations, but there are no substitutes. And we will put a link down below for the ties and the tie tool. So with your chain link, you have a link that's far and you have a link that's close. We're going to take the link that's closest to the post. We're going to take the tie. We're going to slide it around the post, go around the link that my finger's in, pull it in right there. We're gonna take one hand, we're gonna pinch the tails together like so. Pull on your trigger and tie it. Now notice he didn't have the tail sticking straight out this way. He has the tail off to the side, which is incredibly important. Now when we're doing projects that are not security projects, let's say we're in somebody's backyard or something, we will take this, tap this all the way back around to where it touches that link, touches the chain link. We'll take the extra time so that nobody can ever come in contact with that. Typically these break off. That way we don't have this sticking out. But if you'll remember on our other tie, we had those tails sticking out and nobody ever has a problem with that, but they see this and automatically think that somehow, I'm gonna hurt myself on that. I mean, if you're gonna get hooked on that, when this fence is all tied, you're having to work at it. So there's no way that somebody's gonna brush up against this and get hurt. Another thing to think about is right down here. People are very concerned about our ties, but they always forget that look at this. Look at all these bolts sticking out at every single termination. People never say anything about these, but the ties they'll freak out about, so. This is the wire that's actually touching the post. So this is the correct way. What you would not want to do is put it like this. You see how this wire is not touching the post? That would be incorrect. So we have a very similar situation when we're tying with stick ties. We would never want to hook onto this one because this one's not touching the post. We would want to hook onto that and then wrap around just like that. So that's how to properly tie. Now, you think you can beat me? Oh, dude, I can beat you all day long. Well, without further ado, and I'm cold, should we get to racing? Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Now I'm frozen. Okay, so every nine diamonds. That's typically what we'll do is we'll count diamonds uh, to make sure our ties are spaced evenly. So uh, we'll get five ties per post, and then we'll do every nine diamonds. Crap, Netley. You guys don't have this in Florida? No. Like the coldest day in Florida, the absolute coldest day that I've ever seen in Florida wasn't this bad. Are you ready? So my plan of attack is going to be to tie up the fabric so it's not leaning over, and then I'll come back and do all the top rail, then I'll do all the posts. Okay, I'm ready. We won't talk about how hard and cold my hands are at the moment. Done. So this is the way you'll see most of the stuff. This is very typical, just a bent over. I didn't do anything with this side and you'll see that I tied it with my fingers. 
Now, however, the spec would never allow this, but this is the way 98% of the fences are tied out there. But the way the specs want us to do this is they actually call for a wrap and a half. Now, if I was gonna take the time to do a wrap and a half, I would need to do that. And I would need to do that on both sides. So it's not good enough just to do it on the one side. I would have to get my pliers in here and get that wrapped around. Now, this tie is tied to spec. We're gonna go ahead and tie this to spec all the way down. And you can see how much more time this is taking me and how much more difficult this is to tie to spec. We've tied this post here now all the way to spec, but we can still get those ties to kick loose. Some things to consider. This is a diamond and the middle of the diamond's right in the middle of the top rail. I don't have this dressed out perfectly because it's pretty choppy. Uh, looks a little bit like a dinosaur's back on the top and that's not really what we would want. Keep that in mind because that's a sign of a true professional chain link installer. It's one that installs the top and it just flows. And you can actually in the sunlight look down these diamonds where all these joints are and just see it look really, really nice. And Dan, if you think you can do better, okay, well, I'll help you get the ties off first. Oh, another thing we're going to let Dan do that's going to give him a slight advantage. We're going to show you how much faster and easier it makes it when Dan uses this. And I don't have the advantage of using that, so. Uh, you ready? Yep. Okay, go. This is where it's worth noting that in a typical installation when we do this, somebody would be on the outside just stuffing these ties as soon as he got this hung, and that makes it quite a bit faster. So him having to wrap them around from the inside is not the most efficient way to do this, but we want to show you just for comparisons. Maybe not the huge time savings that even I thought it was, but the difference in quality between the two is gonna be substantial. Because the way I tied it, I was cheating every way. Had I done it the right way and got a wrap and a half so that it was halfway secure, it would have easily taken me double that amount of time. I was not doing things the proper way, even doing them the wrong way, he still beat me and was able to do a better job of it. I'm not going to show up because we would destroy the wire to be able to try and kick these off, but you can't kick these ties off. Absolutely will not. Another nice thing on the commercial side is that you can actually stretch mid-run on a 500 foot stretch. Use those ties to hold your tension. To hold your tension. Let's say this is a 500 foot run. What we'll do, halfway down we've got 200 feet. What we do is we tie this entire post with our chain link ties and we'd have our skid steer, our stretching device this way. And we'd be moving in this direction. We tie this post 100% and we put a bunch of ties on the top rail and maybe tie a second post. And once we let off, that wire doesn't move at all. It basically makes a brace out of that box and then we can keep going without having to go all the way to the end to stretch. Because sometimes if you wait until you get to that 500 foot mark to stretch, you're pulling so hard at the other end that you're not getting anything done at this end and you're overstretching at the far end. Stretching mid-run and using these ties to hold that tension on there works really, really well for us. I'm Mark with SWI. I'm freezing my butt off. I'm no longer tied up and I want to go inside. Now, if you guys want to see how to set fence posts without a string, make sure and check out that video right here. If you guys want to see how to install a commercial grade chain link fence, make sure and check that video out right here. Dan with SWI, we hope you have a good dang day.